Claxo. Direct touch area. Use the rotor to enable direct touch for this app. Direct touch. Describe image. Direct direct touch on for Claxo. Oh, hello there. Isn't this antique radio a delight? And what wonders await on its channels? You must want to find out. If you would like to listen to a very special program, turn the dial to channel 4. Channel 2. Channel 3. Channel 4. You have made a selection. Your choice will be confirmed in 3, 2, 1. Choice confirmed. The makers of Claxo Evervescent Tablets present Sandra McCall as Cat Keen, Investigator. Each week this summer, Claxo Tablets, those nifty little pick-me-uppers, bring you the thrilling adventures of Cat Keen. Though she publishes hard-boiled crime fiction under the pen name Sterling Gray, Plucky Cat always seems to find herself in the middle of a genuine mystery. And just like those perky little bubbles in every glass of Claxo, Cat always rises to the occasion. With the help of her friend and society maven Marjorie Banks, and the advice of her companion and lawyer Carlton Prescott, yes friends, Claxo Effervescent Tablets. If life's got you down, you might as well be six feet under without a Claxo. Say, you there, listening to this radio, you seem a smart, sensible consumer. Why not meet me on Channel 6 to hear more about all the things Claxo can do for you? <laughs> Come now, Chester. They want to get to the mystery. You'll have time to shill your swill at the half. Dear listener, the story begins on Channel 1. Set the dial to Channel 1 to begin tonight's story. Or to Channel 6 if you can't get enough Claxo. Tom, Claxo. Speech off. You have made a selection. Your choice will be confirmed in three, two, one. You have made a selection. Your choice will be confirmed in three, two, one. Choice confirmed. Everyone knows I write for the society pages, but that doesn't mean I have to enjoy going to all these functions. Still, when it's your best friend throwing the event, you have to go. For the paper and for Marjorie, I agreed to hobnob with the society elite, even if I'd rather be writing my next book. No, the only mystery I thought I'd be solving today was the one in my closet. Which dress to wear? Something to stand out or something to blend in? The flashy red number Marjorie persuaded me to buy on our last shopping adventure is on channel two. The more sedate Navy two-piece that my mother loves is on Channel 4. The flashy red number Marjorie persuaded me to buy on our last shopping adventure is on Channel 2. The more sedate Navy two-piece that my mother loves is on ch Channel 4. You have the flashy red number Marjorie persuaded me to buy on our last shopping adventure is on Channel 2. The more sedate navy two-piece that my mother loves is on channel four. The flashy red number. You have made a selection. Your choice will be confirmed in three, two, one. Choice confirmed. After some serious contortions to get into that red dress and no small amount of hemming and hawing over the proper shoes, I waited for Carlton to pick me up in his car. Cat? Is that you? You look like a million bucks. And not unlike Lola Livings. Who's that? Oh, that's right. I forgot you have no interest in the crime novels of Sterling Gray. She's my favorite femme fatale in the whole series. <laughs> oh, Sterling Gray again. I should have known. Poor dear Carlton still had no idea Sterling Gray was the pen name where I did my most satisfying writing. I kept looking for an opportunity to tell him, but it was nice to have him as a fan without knowing it's me. Anyway, I let him drive us to Marjorie's Save the Orphans Gala, and even let him summarize my own novel to me as we drove. Well, isn't this quite the affair? 
Marjorie really pulled out all the stops for this one. Hmm, yes. My dear, you've got your grumpy face on. Oh, you know how much I love to mix and mingle with the idle rich. Pish Tosh, you're a society writer. You love your job. I said I loved being a writer. Well, what else would you write? Hmm, what indeed. Silly me. But thank you. I promise to behave. We won't stay long, and then perhaps I'll let you take me to a motion picture. I see the silent auctions drawing quite a crowd. Maybe I'll go have a look. Of course, if it's a Marjorie Banks party, I'm sure the buffet's also worth a visit. Take your time and make sure you get those vultures at the paper their requisite amount of fluff and gossip. I'll be only too happy to... Say, is that what I think it is? Excuse me, cat. I'll be right back. Don't worry. I love to be abandoned at stuffy galas. Stuffy? Really, darling, you'll stop my poor feelings into the carpet. Marjorie, come here. You've outdone yourself. The ballroom's beautiful and the quartet's top-notch. Thank you. And thank you for donating your book to the auction. Has Carlton noticed yet? Not so loud, and yes. He was off like a shot not five seconds after he glanced in that direction. Leaving a talented beauty like you unescorted was reckless. May I offer you my arm and give you the tour? You may. <laughs> Where shall we begin? Marjorie and I visit the silent auction on Channel 3. We wander past the buffet on Channel 6. You have made a selection. Your choice will be confirmed in three, two, one. Choice confirmed. And here we are at the trough with a rich and powerful sup. Absolutely the finest caterers. A full stomach opens a lot of wallets. I always forget to eat at these events. We really should... Yes, yes, we can eat. Just help me quickly with the column. Keep your eyes peeled for scandal, gossip, and outrageous fashion. Well, ordinarily I'd point you towards Teddy Foxbridge, but I see his place card hasn't even been collected yet. There's his fiance, though, with that infamous sparkling diamond brooch of hers that she never misses an opportunity to wear. Her name will come to me. Oh, uh, yes, Evelyn. Drake. Hmm. If that gentleman helping her adjust that brooch isn't her fiancé, then someone's being quite bold. If Carlton saw someone that familiar with me... Wait. I know him. That's Arthur Erickson. Every posh gent's perennial sidekick. He's also a defense attorney. Carlton squares off against him fairly often. I can't imagine why he'd take such liberties with Evelyn. Oh, there's no story here, Kat. Arthur and Teddy are thick as thieves, and Arthur loves Evelyn like a sister. Always looking out for the pair of them. That's why the upper crust like having Arthur around. He's a real swell. Hmm. Speaking of swells, why is Carlton spending so much time over at the silent auction? Oh, no. He's bidding on that first edition Sterling Grey book I donated. Oh, Marjorie, come quick before that dope bids a month's salary on a book I have a box full of in my mother's attic. Overall, the evening was an unqualified success. Except for the missing Teddy Foxbridge. It's one thing to let an expensive ticket go unused, but the sundial he promised to donate to the silent auction would have been a big ticket fundraiser for Marjorie's cause. Because I'm a good friend, and also because my editor felt my column was a little boring, I volunteered to look in on Teddy and find out the reason for the no-show. That's when things turned interesting. No one home at the Foxbridge residence. No sign of Teddy anywhere for days. I still think you're hoping for a mystery because you want a more exciting column. Well, think that if you want, but I did some following up. Teddy Foxbridge hasn't shown up for a single appointment or meeting in days. I asked around. He's a wealthy businessman who has a reputation for being reliable. If he's missing, he could be in real trouble. Be that as it may, when I introduce you to Evelyn, don't start by blurting out you think her fiancé is in mortal peril. When have I ever been less than a dear, Marjorie? Don't make me answer that. Now behave. We're here. I know I promised Marjorie I'd be on my best behavior, but I couldn't escape the feeling all was not right with this Foxbridge. Blurting out my suspicions to Evelyn is on Channel 1. Being more delicate with my questions is on Channel 2. You have made a sl You- Blurting out my su- Blurting out my suspicions to Evelyn is on Channel 1. Being more delicate with my questions is on Channel 2. You have made a selection. Your choice will be confirmed in 3, 2, 1. Choice confirmed. Oh, 
Oh, Marjorie, darling, what a nice surprise. And what a lovely event that was the other night. You should be so proud. Ev, you're a delight as always. I'm only sorry we didn't have more time to catch up. That's for the same reason as always. You moved so fast through the room. You were a social blur. I didn't even have time to tell you the news. News? Oh, heavens, yes, tell me everything. But first, where are my manners? Do you know Catherine Keene? She writes for the Society Pages. We've been friends since childhood. The Society Pages? In that case, I should perhaps be a little more careful with my news, at least until it's public. Oh, you can trust Cat with a secret, I promise. Right, Cat? A lockbox of secrets, that's me. Well, certain secrets are what the Society Pages are all about. <laughs> and seeing as how you're a friend of Marjorie's, I'll happily give you the scoop. Teddy finally married me! Oh my, are you quite serious? And I wasn't invited. No one was. We eloped. I was beginning to think we would set some kind of record for the longest engagement, and then last weekend we were married at sea. At sea? You're pulling my leg. Oh, of course I've always wanted a big to-do, but Teddy's stutter and stage fright have proven quite an obstacle to setting a date. The last time we even got close to booking a church, he fainted right there in the rectory office. A wedding at sea makes a splash in its own way. But I can't imagine a married man wanting to be away from his new bride so quickly. Oh, Teddy's always so busy with business. Is that why we didn't see Teddy at the fundraiser the other night? Oh, no. Teddy stays frightfully busy with all his dealings. He makes investments and does a lot of traveling. That's how he came by the sundial for your auction. Oh, but didn't you notice? The sundial wasn't at the auction. Now, that's strange. Arthur promised me he would deliver it since Teddy might be delayed coming back from his trip. Trip? Inspecting some mine in South America. Charlie wants him to invest in it. Charlie wouldn't stop talking about it to Arthur even as the boat left the marina. Arthur's investing. No, but he has a vested interest in protecting Teddy from everything. He's such a loyal best friend like that. And thank goodness for him helping out while Teddy's away. I apologize if we were cloistered so much at your gala. We had a very big secret to keep, after all. Arthur's such a dear friend. Teddy couldn't have asked for a better best man. But you still need a witness or the wedding doesn't count, right? Oh, Charlie helped out. The boat was Arthur's idea to help Teddy get past the stage fright of a big crowd, but Charlie took care of chartering the boat and was there to see his chum married. And the sundial? Maybe the plans to bring it to the auction changed. You know men. I'm just happy the sundial's not in the house anymore. It gave me the creeps. I have to say, you're so admirably restrained. I know if Carlton ever got around to marrying me, I'd want to know where he was at all times. And maybe that's why he hasn't married you yet. I used to pester all the time, but I've learned it's better not to meddle when a man says he's up to business. If his investment partner and his best friend tell me he's too busy to call, I'm inclined to believe it's important. You mentioned that before. He's away? Oh, yes. Somewhere in South America, I think. He's looking into some large mining investments. It seems like he and Charlie made quite a find. When was the last time you heard from him? Is there a way to contact him? I don't see that's any of your business, Miss Keene. My husband is busy. I have no idea what became of the sundial, but it seems a moot point with the fundraiser over and already a success. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a frightful amount to prepare for when he returns, which I have been assured will be soon. Oh, of course. Thank you for your time, Evelyn. Yes, and congratulations. Are you proud of me? I behaved. I'm not sure we learned much. Maybe there was nothing to learn. I didn't say we learned nothing. Oh, I can tell from that tone of voice that Kent Manning is about to jump off the pages of a Sterling Gray novel and once again get us into trouble. The case of the missing sundial coming to bookshelves everywhere. Not the missing sundial. The missing Teddy Foxbridge. I had the strong feeling Evelyn wasn't telling us everything. In fact, she definitely told us three important somethings. One, they chartered a boat to be married at sea, which means they needed a sea captain to marry them. Two, Arthur was present. And three, so was Charlie. Marjorie and I interview Charlie on Channel 3. We interview Arthur on Channel 4. We try to find the sea captain on Channel 5. Marjorie and I interview Charlie... Speech on. Safari. Double tap to open. Use 3D touch to show home. Controls. Time. Ca ca selected. Squ